Yeah, so uh, hi, I'm Bob Fister. I'm a neonatologist for quality and safety. I'm the uh, medical director of medical affairs. One thing that's changed over the last several months is we know that it now has a little bit more of uh, the potential to spread from aerosol. When people speak, um, when people cough or sneeze, it aerosolizes. Its capacity to spread by aerosol really makes it a little bit more challenging to contain. Herd immunity uh, is a concept that we usually talk about with regard to vaccines. What percent of a population you need to get vaccinated such that the, the virus stops spreading readily in a given community. Um, people have brought it up with regard to uh, COVID as part of a kind of a natural vaccine. Maybe perhaps we should rip the Band-Aid off and just let everybody get infected with this idea that uh, that'll stop the spread of the disease. And, there's a couple of cautionary tales I would have about that. The first is we're, we, we are seeing now cases of second infection. Although these subsequent infections may not be severe like the first one, you're clearly still infectious during the second infection period of time. And, and that's what's really concerning is it won't actually stop the spread of the disease. The second piece that I would really caution people about is the, just the, the magnitude of, of what we're talking about. You know, with 330 million people in the United States, we estimate somewhere around 70% of people would need to get infected uh, to reach to herd immunity. And depending on what you think of the mortality rate, even an incredibly conservative estimate would yield a number of deaths somewhere between 500,000 and 2 million. It's an unacceptable number of deaths. 500,000 to 2 million people is just too many to die to, to get that herd immunity. So we've been talking mostly about mortality, but a huge number of people who have infection leave the hospital as pulmonary cripples. They have decreased exercise capacity. Uh, they oftentimes are discharged on oxygen. The impact of the virus on the heart is something that we're really seeing more of. By doing echocardiograms and measuring enzymes that reflect injury of the heart, we're seeing that about a third of all patients have long-lasting heart damage. And again, this is happening in young and previously healthy folks as well. Uh, we're observing a break in communication of nerves to the muscles, and so this can present with kind of MS-like symptoms. 78% of patients have kidney injury. And the virus also has an impact on the blood, the hematologic system, and this is leading to clots. Uh, these clots can show up in the lungs, which can be a devastating injury, but they can also injure other organs. So the, the same simple things that we've been saying still apply. Social distancing, avoid indoor gatherings, wash your hands or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Wear a mask and have that mask cover your nose. I, I've seen a lot of folks in the community with a mask uh, un under the nose and you know certainly your, your nose is connected to the respiratory tree.